Hey everybody, uh, it's day six of our meteorology unit and today we're going to be discussing how the uneven heating of the earth is going to affect the wind that we experience. So we're going to review what we've learned already about global wind and then we're going to apply those concepts to see how uh, convection affects local winds when we have the uneven heating of the earth in a local area. So let's take a look at global winds first. Now these diagrams aren't to scale, um, but just to give you an idea of what's happening. So we have the sun shining on the earth. The equator is going to receive the most direct sunlight, so it's going to get the most energy. It's going to become the highest temperature. And those higher latitudes, as we move away from the equator, it's going to get indirect sunlight, so it's getting less energy. It's not getting as warm as this equator. So we have uneven heating of the earth's surface. And let's see how that's going to affect how air moves uh, and the wind we experience. So because the equator is getting the warmest, and now just to make something clear, the sun is not directly heating the atmosphere. The sun's rays are being absorbed by the Earth's surface. And then when the air touches the Earth's surface by conduction, it's going to transfer thermal energy. And if it transfers enough thermal energy, it's going to change the density of the air. So as the sun's rays are being absorbed by the equator, the land by the equator, and that air is warming up, it's going to cause that air to become less dense and it's going to rise. When that air, when that parcel of air rises and pretty much gets to the top of the troposphere, about 17 kilometers altitude, we're going to start to see the air move to higher latitudes. So it's going to move north, it's going to move south. And as the air moves to those higher latitudes, it's going to cool and it's going to rain. So that's why we see a lot of tropical rainforests close to the equator and we see a lot of tropical weather down there because they're getting a lot of this warm, moist air evaporating, rising up, and then condensing and cooling. Eventually, the air is going to cool and it's going to sink. And by this point, it's usually used up a lot of its rain it's already dropped a lot of its rain as precipitation so we actually see a lot of the deserts on earth happening where this convection cell is sinking it's called the hadley cell so as this air is sinking we're still going to see more warm air rising by the equator and as a result of that this air is going to move from this high pressure area to this lower pressure area and that's what creates global wind. So if you're standing here on the Earth's surface, you're going to feel that air moving from this mid-latitude back to the equator. Let's take a look at how the uneven heating of the Earth's surface affects local winds. So if you're at the beach, uh, you may have experienced some wind at the beach, and that's because land and water have two different specific heats. And the specific heat is how much energy the sun is going to need or any type of heat source is going to need to change the temperature of that type of material. So if we're dealing with water, that has a very high specific heat, has the highest in the stable, and the land usually has a pretty low specific heat. And as a result of that, Water, it's hard to change its temperature. That's why you can go to the beach during July and it feels really hot, but the water is still cold. Or you can go to the beach in October when the air is starting to get cold, but the, the water is still kind of warm. That's because it takes water a really long time to change its temperature. The land with its low specific heat, it's easy to change its temperature. It changes throughout the course of the day and the night as the sun goes up and down. So let's take a look during the daytime. We're going to the beach, cue the sun. And what's happening here at the land with its low specific heat, it's easy to change the temperature. So we're going to see that air start to become less dense and it's going to rise. Uh, over here by the water, since we have a higher specific heat, it's harder to change the temperature. It's going to be cooler over here. We have uneven heating of the Earth's surface. So therefore, we'll have the air becoming more dense and sinking over the water. Now, it's just going to fill in this convection cell. After this air heats and rises, it's going to go and move to that open void that's being left by this cool sinking air. The cool sinking air will do the same. It's going to move and fill in the void that's left by that warm rising air. And if you were in a boat or if you were on the beach, you would feel this as wind. It's blowing from this high pressure area to the low pressure area. And since it comes from the sea, we call it a sea breeze. 
I always like to tell my students, the wind is named from where it came. If it came from the sea, we call it a sea breeze. So we had a great day at the beach. The sun is going down. It is now nighttime. And because of the low specific heat, the land is going to get cold at nighttime. Remember, it's easy to change its temperature. Because of that, we're going to have the air that's coming into contact with it become dense. That air is going to cool and it's going to sink over the land. And remember, the water, it's hard to change its temperature because of its higher specific heat. So if the temperature of the water is greater than the temperature of the land, then it's going to cause the air to rise over the water this time. And the opposite will happen. So we're going to have that air move to the open void up high, aloft. And then down low, near the Earth's surface, it's going to move again from the high pressure zone to the low pressure zone. And that local wind we call a land breeze because it came from the land. So those are three examples of how the uneven heating of Earth's surface creates wind on Earth.